Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, with the hope that you are fine, I am going to talk about yet another interesting sensor that is widely used in chemical and pharmaceutical industry. I am talking about a pH sensor. Do you know what pH is? Let's find out everything about pH and why, where and how it is measured. Simply put, pH is a number that defines the acidity or alkalinity of any solution. Being acidic or alkaline has certain advantages and disadvantages depending on the situation. For example, certain chemicals should have a defined pH before they can be used in a chemical industry to get the desired output. Moreover, if we talk about fruits and their juices, then lemons, apples, oranges and grapes are acidic in nature. And therefore, if we are manufacturing bottled juice of their flavor, then the pH value should match with the pH value of fruits that are naturally available. On the contrary, most of the green vegetables, carrots, mangoes, and many other naturally occurring fruits and vegetables are alkaline in nature. According to nutritionists, our diet should be close to neutral if we want to stay healthy, whereas for losing weight, acidic diet is recommended as it helps in burning fat. Therefore, in food products especially, the pH should be maintained to suitable levels because it influences the quality and taste of the food. Just as the last example, pure water is a neutral solution. That is, it is exactly in between acids and alkaline things. With these things in mind, we still don't know that what the pH value represents. Well, it represents the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution in grams per liter and is expressed as this. Now, as the hydrogen ion concentration increases, the pH value decreases. But the pH scale is usually limited to zero because in practice, we seldom use solutions that have pH value less than zero. A zero pH value means there is one gram of hydrogen ions in one liter of solution. Moving on the other side, the pH scale has a maximum value of 14, but pH values can go beyond that as well. However, in practice, they are limited to 14 because value of 14 means extreme absence of hydrogen ions from the solution. So now you should be able to figure out the hydrogen ion concentration in pure water. You can plug pH value of 7 in this formula and work out the hydrogen ion concentration. It will come out to be 1 into 10 raised to power minus 7 grams per liter. Having said enough about the pH value, let us now see how we can measure it. Well, if you have taken any course related to chemistry, you must be familiar with the litmus paper, which is widely used method for checking whether the solution is acidic, neutral or alkaline. There are other chemical color indicators as well that change their color according to the pH value of the solution into which they are dipped. The most common litmus paper available turns red if the solution into which it is dipped is acidic, whereas it turns blue if the solution is alkaline. The strength of the color also hints about the acidity or alkalinity of the solution. Although litmus paper is very easy to use and an economical method, but unfortunately it is manual and gives very approximate indication of the pH value. Therefore, we have to resort to some other more accurate and automatic method for measuring the pH if we want to get this measurement in industrial environment. A typical pH meter has two basic components. The meter itself, that is basically a galvanometer, but has a scale drawn on it so that it shows the pH value and two special probes that are inserted in the solution whose pH is to be measured. One of the two probes is a glass electrode that does the main job. The glass electrode is made of special glass containing metal salts in it. Inside the glass electrode is a potassium chloride solution that has a pH value of 7. Furthermore, a silver-based wire is also present in the tube that is connected to the outside of the tube and then to the meter. The other probe is simply a potassium chloride wire suspended in a potassium chloride solution. The whole device comes in two different forms, 
where in one of them both probes are separately provided whereas in the other a single housing contains both probes. So no matter which type of meter you are using you have to dip the probes in the solution whose pH is to be measured. When the probes are inserted in the solution of unknown pH value the hydrogen ions present in the test solution replace some of the metal ions on the outside of the glass tube through a process called ion exchange. Same activity will also happen on the inside of the glass tube where the hydrogen ions in the potassium chloride solution will replace some metal ions on the inside of the glass tube. Now if the test solution is acidic more ion swapping will occur on the outside as compared to the inside whereas in case of alkaline solution more hydrogen ions will replace metal ions on the inside as compared to the outside. This unequal ion exchange activity will generate a potential difference between the sides that will cause electrons to flow either from inside the tube to outside or from outside towards the inside of the glass tube. Hence, electron flow will start that will be measured using a galvanometer as shown in the diagram. The higher difference of ion exchange activity will indicate strength of acidic or alkaline solution, whereas the direction of flow of electrons will tell us the nature of the solution, that is whether it is acidic or alkaline. The potential generated in such meters is of the order of few millivolts, which is detected by the meter, and the meter scale shows the pH value instead of the potential difference. So, dear learners, I hope you have understood the working of this simple pH meter that is quite widely used in industries. This was everything for this video. Thank you and take care.